So today we are going to be going through the Concordia University Wisconsin's most popular undergraduate programs. All right, so today we're gonna go over an overview of campus because no matter how you start your program, if you wanna start online or if you wanna start on campus, you can always finish your degree on campus um, as soon as things start lightening up. So we'll talk about a, a, a what Concordia University looks like. Uh, then we'll go through the updated applications process due to COVID-19, how that's changed a little bit. And then the program highlights. So our most popular programs for international students are our business program, the computer science program, healthcare, nursing, and pre-pharmacy. Those are our most popular programs. So we'll go through those today. Um, we have many, many other programs, obviously. Um, we have over 70 undergraduate majors, um, but I can't cover 70 programs today. So we're gonna do just the most popular ones right now. If it's something that you'd like to learn more about or if there's a program I didn't talk about, feel free to tell me um, in the chat box that you'd like some more information on that. Definitely. Okay. One moment here. Um, and then, like I said, we're gonna have that Q&A as well. All right. So then moving on, like I said before, so whether you are wanting to start your program in person or if you would prefer to start your program online, we are here to help you and support that, definitely. So for many of us, and currently all of Concordia University Wisconsin students, all of our classes have moved online. So students are still making sure that they're following up with their program. They are still making sure their education timelines are going to happen on, on um, the normal schedule. So they'll be able to graduate on time. Because of COVID-19, we don't want you to suddenly have your chan uh, plans changed because of our inability to, to adapt. So all of our stuff is online. We can't tell the future, unfortunately, if the fall semester, what that's going to look like or what it's going to look like specifically for you, um, because we know there's a lot of a lot of factors that go into that. But no matter what, we want to be as flexible as possible and make sure you can get the education you want. Okay, so the overview of campus, where are we? So right now we are in Concordia University, Wisconsin's campus, um, and that is in the Midwestern United States. <coughs> You see on there that it's the blue state there in the, in the top um, portion of, of the United States. Uh, we are 20 minutes north of Milwaukee, which is the largest city in our state of Wisconsin. It has about 1.5 million people, but we're also 90 minutes north of Chicago. Um, and you may have heard of Chicago. It's a very, very big city and we're close to it. Um, so our students have the advantage of being next to two very large cities that they can have a lot of access to a lot of different things. Um, that means diversity, that means art and culture, that means national sports teams. Um, Milwaukee ourselves has uh, three national sports teams that we can't wait to, to root for them again as soon as things open up. Uh, we are a private university, so we are a Christian campus, but you do not have to be a Christian to come to Concordia University, Wisconsin. Not at all. Um, we just hold that as part of our identity in terms of holding, you know, religious services every day. Um, and also having very strong values and ethics to make sure we're always doing um, the best by our students to make sure that we are supporting you throughout your whole process of your education. So what does the enrollment look like? So our students are um, about half and half undergraduate to graduate professional students. And that means there's a really good mix of students there. Um, for undergraduates, it's a way for them to look to see what does it take to be a graduate student. For graduate students, it means that they can mentor um, younger students in the same field um, and, and have a great variety. Uh, Concordia University, Wisconsin also has the fourth highest international student population in Wisconsin. So given our small size, that is a huge accomplishment uh, for our university, but also shows that there's a reason why international students really like coming to Concordia, Wisconsin. Um, so you're going to see a lot of different international students. 
In fact, we have 400, more than 400 international students from 37 different countries represented at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Um, obviously, this picture is <laughs> everybody, um, but uh, it, <laughs> we have such a diversity of international students. So it won't feel like you're kind of stepping from one of your own home campuses to another. Um, just as a as a side note here, um, if you don't have yourself muted, that can really help with the background noise. Um, so feel free to, to use that bottom left hand corner to mute yourself there. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so moving back on. Um, we are located on the shores of Lake Michigan. Uh, Lake Michigan is one of the Great Lakes in the United States. It's a lake that is so big, you can't see the other side. Uh, so it's really like having our own ocean here in the Midwestern United States. And uh, we do experience winter here uh, in Wisconsin, but all of our campus is connected by tunnels underground. So during the winter time, even though it's a little cold, uh, you don't feel it at all when you're in the building. You don't have to put a coat on if you don't want to. And that's one of my favorite parts, definitely. Um, but we do make full advantage of being by Lake Michigan. So there is a walking path that goes all the way down to Lake Michigan and along the shoreline. It's absolutely gorgeous, wonderful to get a break from, from your studies. Um, in the warmer months, uh, having a beach very close by is fantastic and you can often see students um, out there cooling off. We are a Division III uh, sports team, which means we do offer athletics and we also have quite a few. So we have 32 different uh, varsity level athletics right now. Um, so there's always somebody to root for or a game to go to or um, your, your friends in classes will probably be student athletes. Um, we have quite a few of them on campus. We do also have intramural and club sports. You can see the list there. Um, we have some sand volleyball courts on campus, which are again, fabulous to take advantage of during the, during the warmer months. Um, but you can see we have a whole list of other club sports that students who aren't exactly student athletes or want that to be a large part of their uh, college experience can still have a good time. Uh, we currently have eight different residence halls on campus and they have many different room styles. So we have singles, doubles, triples, quads, um, all of that range. So there's quite a few people um, there, you, you know, having roommates. And But if, if you are a person who really needs a single room because of, um, because of some very specific reasons, we are happy to help accommodate those. We do also have a fitness center on campus. Um, this is the weights section of, of, the, of the weight room. Um, but we also have an area where you can have the, you know, the ellipticals, the, the running um, sections, where if you're really a runner, you can do that too in the, in the colder months, definitely. Uh, here in our library, you can see two of our comfort dogs. So their names are Sage and Zoe. Sage and Zoe uh, walk around campus, making sure students can, can feel um, that little bit of home because they can't bring their, their pet with them. So Sage and Zoe are kind of the pets of Concordia. Uh, during the, the stressful times of finals, uh, they become very popular. <laughs> uh, a place they're not allowed to go in is the dining hall. So on the dining hall, we have other uh, four different areas where students can, can get a good meal on campus. They have different varieties. Um, but one thing I do want to point out is that the dining hall will always have a vegetarian option. Um, and that doesn't mean a salad bar, although we do have a salad bar every day, um, but there is a vegetarian option as well every day that is different. So you don't, won't get bored of it. Uh, we have WIT ice skating rink right on campus. Um, it's gorgeous with all of those lights. It's kind of like a magical place and a way for you to, again, enjoy the, the colder months, the changes of seasons. Um, is something that some of our international students really enjoy because they haven't seen snow or they haven't seen an ice skating rink except in the movies. So this is a way for you to do it on campus for free. We also have um, a smart classroom. So this smart classroom is designed to help students manage their stress levels. Um, you can see there one student is using um, a computer simulation to help control his breathing so he can calm down a little bit. We also have massage chairs. So uh, again, during finals time, this becomes a very popular area. 
We have over 75 clubs and organizations, and they range from a lot of different things, from church work, because we are that private Christian institution, all the way to field-specific things like chemistry club and education club. Um, but there's fine arts, health and fitness clubs, multicultural clubs, so if you're looking to learn another language, um, service and then special interests. So I do want to point out one of the special interest clubs is uh, the eSports team. So this is actually something that is still happening even during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Our eSports teams are playing video games against each other and against other other schools. So um, if you're like, you know, volleyball, not my thing and ice skating, not my thing, but um, I'm a gamer. So we do have that available to you as well as a way to, to quickly make some friends. That said, we have things that happen off campus as well. We take advantage of being so close to Milwaukee and Chicago. So you can see we take lots of field trips to lots of different places. Um, you can sign up if you want, um, no pressure, but it's a great way to get involved with, with others. That said, we also have things happening on campus even more so that are specifically designed to showcase and support our international students. So we have international daily events like if um, uh, for, for Independence Days, we'll use that as an excuse to kind of um, showcase one, uh, one um, culture or one country. Um, for example, we had Lunar New Year was a really big celebration. Um, but we also have something called International Education Week which is a week-long um, extravaganza of, of celebrating different students and their cultures. They'll take like an hour, um, tell us uh, a meal that they've prepared and why it's important to their home. Um, and then we end it with something called the food fair on Friday, which is uh, it's where we bring a whole bunch of tables out, students bring food that they've prepared and we reimburse for, um, and all of campus gets to enjoy it. I will say it's the most students I've ever seen on campus at one time. It was amazing. Um, during COVID-19 as well, we've been making sure our students are supported. Um, so we have about 100 students on campus still who have um, chosen or have been unable to return home. Um, and for those students, we've been doing a lot. So we've been making to-go crafts. They can take a craft or a book with them to their room, to their dorm room do it in their dorm so that they have something besides schoolwork or, or movies to do. Um, we also do weekly snack bags for our students on campus that we change out every week. We give them things like laundry soap um, in a pre-packaged uh, thing. Um, we also are doing online events like the quarantine challenge where students do a variety of activities that we have outlined, like go for a walk and take a picture. Um, and that can earn them points, which earns them prizes for, for gift cards to local businesses in the area. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, there is a security station there that is being um, enforced by our campus security. And they are making sure that students that are living on campus are being as safe as possible and very well protected. So first we have our online application, which you can waive the application fee if you use code USACUW. So again, good reason to take a picture of this. USACUW will make sure that you can waive the application fee. Then we need to see how you did in your past education. So sending us your scanned transcripts. So transcripts are the thing where you have your grades recorded from your, from your secondary school or your high school. Um, we need a scanned copy of that. We will then convert your grades into what a US institution looks for. Um, we need at least a 2.0 on a 4.0 scale for full admission. That means um, you go right into classes. But if you do not meet that 2.0, do not panic. We can still offer conditional admission. Conditional admission means that we need to see that you can be successful in your first semester by earning at least a B minus in all of your classes um, in order to remain at the university. If you aren't able to meet that, that um, grade requirement, that means you're probably not going to be successful and we want you to make sure that you're, you're getting the most out of it. So we would ask that you would then leave the institution. Okay, but then moving on to an English score. So we do require an ILTIS, TOEFL, or PTE if it's available. 
Um, if you don't have one, again, don't panic. We have ESL classes that you can do first in order to be enrolled in your academic classes. Um, for those of you though who do want to take that English test, um, you can see our scores there. Um, the highlighted portions are the portions that have changed because of COVID-19. So we know that a lot of the English testing centers have closed or and have, have not issued plans to reopen. So we understand that. We put out a, an update that we are now accepting Duolingo scores. So Duolingo, if you're not familiar, is an online English test that you can do at home. That means wherever you are, you need to have an internet connection. Um, it costs about $49 US dollars and takes about one hour um, to complete. So it's relatively easy compared to, or you know, easy to use. It's an easy test to understand. Um, and we're, we're accepting that. For a minimum um, score, we're, we're asking for 90 for full admission into, into your academic classes, but you do not have to meet that in order to, to enter our ESL classes first, for instance. We are also now accepting the TOEFL at home test, um, same scores there. And then if you have it, if you've taken it, the ACT or SAT test, send us those scores too, but it's not required. You do not have to send us an ACT or SAT score. So now getting into the program overviews. So like I said, we have over 70 majors amongst six different schools. Uh, we are gonna go through these top um, majors, like I said before, because I don't have time to talk about all 70. So let's talk about the most popular ones. Then also, if you're not familiar with how a US college education works, um, we are going to have you do the core classes, which are classes that every undergraduate student takes, but there is some flexibility in there so you can choose those courses. Then you have your major classes and those classes are the ones that are, you know, your nursing classes or your physics classes or your biology classes, you know, um, the ones that are going to be your major. Then uh, each major often has elective classes, so classes that are um, needed to be taken in addition to. Um, and then if you would prefer, you could do a minor, which is kind of like a smaller degree tacked on to your bigger degree. All of these are about 120 credits total. So transfer credit. Uh, we do accept transfer credit depending on, um, depending on the situation. So uh, if you were to take uh, something that would be considered college credit classes, um, we would submit those for a credit transcript evaluation. And you may be able to transfer some of the credit you took in high school or your secondary school if it was at a certain level of difficulty um, or a certain, um, you know, if it was designated as college classes, those can be transferred. Okay. So our most popular program is probably our School of Business, um, which all of those classes are, are your major classes are often going to be happening in the uh, new Batterman School of Business building. It's a gorgeous brand new building. So who doesn't like taking classes in a new building, right? Um, we also have many, many degrees. Again, I would suggest taking a little, a little screenshot or a little um, camera um, shot of that. So we have lots and lots of different options for business. Um, and feel free to, to learn more about those on our website. Or if you can put in the chat too, if there's a specific major you'd like more information about, I would be happy to send that your way. No worries. So we have um, the general bachelor's of business, which usually takes about four years to complete. Again, no ACT or SAT required. It's about 120 credits, okay? But we have something special called the Business Scholars Program. This is for students who did very well in, in their secondary school um, and, have, and are coming in with a high GPA of at least a 3.5. They also do need to submit an ACT or SAT. Okay, you can see those minimums there. They though get to graduate with both a bachelor's degree and an MBA in four years. That's huge. That's like, you know, that's cutting down your education time by a lot. Um, to get that bachelor's and MBA degree. And then also, big underlined here, um, no extra cost. You would be paying the undergraduate tuition for the Business Scholars Program, not the uh, graduate tuition. That's, that's big. 
All right, there are also lots of clubs and organizations that are, are revolved around business. So you can get that experience in your classroom, but you can also do it in a club outside of class in a more relaxed and formal way. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through these. Feel free to take a screenshot if you'd like. Okay, School of Arts and Sciences. Again, lots of different degrees. We have about 40 different degrees and lots of departments in the arts and sciences. Um, right now, we're gonna talk about computer science as it's probably our most popular program. So just like the business program, we have something similar. So the computer science scholars, that is happening here too. So the normal, we have a normal uh, computer science general bachelor's degree, which takes about four years to complete. You do not have to submit an ACT or SAT, and it's about 120 credits to complete the program. But for those computer science scholars, they can get a bachelor's degree and a master's of computer science degree in only four years. Again, that's chopping down your, your education timeline a lot. You get a lot more bang for your buck, as we say here in the States. Again, no extra cost, but you do need to have that really high GPA coming in um, and an ACT or SAT score. Um, so we do need to see that if you'd like to be part of the computer science scholars. Okay. Uh, we also have computer science concentrations for those um, interested in this. Uh, there's software engineering, AI and robotics, cybersecurity, animation, and information systems. So there's lots of ways you can differentiate yourself from other computer science graduates um, around the world. So if you are going up against, you know, someone who has a general um, computer science degree and you say, well, I have a concentration in AI and robotics, that gives you an edge amongst other competitors. You can also see there in the picture um, our uh, Dr. Mike Littman, who is a computer science professor. He is adjusting one of our 3D printers. Uh, we are proud to have one of the largest maker spaces in the state. Um, and right now they are being used to create um, some 3D printed masks that are going to our local healthcare workers in Wisconsin. We also have the Hackathon Club, which is something that our computer science majors really take advantage of, or people who aren't computer science majors but really like um, doing code and stuff. Um, but they compete against other schools in the area. Um, and it's a great time. All right, School of Health Professions. Um, our School of Health uh, degrees here, I've highlighted our most popular program. It's the Rehabilitation Science Program. Um, this one is for students who want to then go on to become like an occupational therapist or uh, rehab uh, therapist, uh, which programs we do have on campus. So it's kind of the first step in, in, your, in your progression. Um, there are also lots of clubs that students can be a part of if they're interested in rehab science. Um, I've put them all here, but you also get that hands-on experience from our very um, um, experienced faculty members um, and how to, how to um, actually put those skills you're learning in, in a practice. School of Nursing is also quite popular for students. Um, there are two options uh, for the nursing program. One is to do pre-nursing classes. Uh, that one just requires, again, your grades, your English results, but we do not require an ACT or SAT in order to go into the pre-nursing. The nursing degree, if you want to go directly into it, um, we do require the transcripts, but then also they have a slightly higher English threshold. So you can see there a TOEFL of at least a 79 or an ELTIS of at least a 6.5, but they do not require an ACT or SAT. Okay, so they have a little bit of a higher English threshold. But there's a good reason for that. They are dealing with extremely difficult uh, vocabulary that you've probably never seen before. So they need to make sure you can move very quickly along through the program and be successful. Uh, they also are giving you that hands-on experience. And I put a picture in here. So these are nursing students in a disaster simulation. So again, they're going through things that we're experiencing right now, right across our world. And they've been doing that and training for that uh, before they graduate. You can also see in this picture here, nursing students in a cardiac code simulation. So once again, you are getting that hands-on experience that others may have only gotten in books. So you'll be able to actually do it. Um, there are also uh, several clubs and organizations that students can be a part of if they want to be um, for, for nursing. 
All right, so School of Pharmacy, you can see we also have a new uh, pharmacy building. It's, it's gorgeous, wonderful place to take some classes. So there are a few pathways into the pharmacy program. Um, it's going to be up to what you're able, what you, and what you, what you're able, and also what you're looking for. So we have something called pre-pharmacy, which is uh, pre-pharmacy classes. You can do a two plus four. Um, you can so you take those pre-pharmacy classes over a two-year period, or you can take them over a three-year period and then go into the PharmD courses. Or if you're like I really really want that bachelor's degree first. Um, you can certainly do that and then go into the four years of PharmD school. Again, of course, this is up to each individual to determine and how long um, it's going to take you to do those classes. Uh, so uh, within that two plus four and three plus four, all of that, there are uh, different um, designations within there. So pre-pharmacy, uh, eventually in order to get into the pharmacy school, the PharmD classes, you will be required to take a PCAT test, um, but they do not require the ACT or SAT. For early assurance, early assurance is a little different. Early assurance means I will be automatically um, accepted into Concordia University of Wisconsin's pharmacy program. Um, that means we do require a little extra on the front end that you don't then have to show later. That means we need a high GPA of at least a 3.2 an ACT or SAT score, um, two letters of reference, and you will do an interview with the, with the School of Pharmacy. But you do not need to take that PCAT test in order to, be, um, uh, to get into the PharmD program. Also, you'll know right away from the start that you don't have to apply for a pharmacy program. That's gonna be big. Then we have our pharmaceutical sciences major. Again, this is if you are really wanting to do a bachelor's degree, that's a four-year bachelor's. They do not require the ACT or SAT. Um, and then you would do your, your master's program after. Pharmacy has quite a few clubs and organizations that students can be a part of. Again, to make that resume um, look a little better when you're applying for jobs post-graduation. All right, what about post-graduation? What happens after you graduate? How do we make sure our students are successful? Well, we have the Concordia uh, Career Services Center, and this is right on campus and helps you with every portion of your job application, from actually searching for the job to uh, building your resume, making sure you've got all of your I's dotted and T's crossed, as we say, making sure every detail is perfect, um, and then applying for the job, practicing your interview skills. Um, and while you'll be able to meet um, and interact with faculty who are leaders in their field, we also have things like the alumni networking event. So we are bringing things on campus for you to, to find those jobs after graduation. Also, we have our wonderful uh, inter international student advisor. Uh, her name is Robin Kuzu, um, and she is there to help with one-on-one -on -one consultation for things like visa-related paperwork and regulations, um, making sure that your OPT uh, will get approved, making sure all of those details are, are ready to go. Uh, she does one-on-one -on -one consultation, which is something that you can't usually get from a larger institution. Um, she does a phenomenal job and knows each of her students by name. All right, so we've come to the end of the presentation. I wanted to keep things kind of tight and, and, and um, sweet for you guys here. Uh, but you can see here is our contact information for the international office, um, international.admissions at cuw.edu if you have any questions. Um, or if you're like, I've got way too many emails right now, um, but I do have WhatsApp. We are on WhatsApp now. So feel free to, again, take a picture of this slide um, and add us on WhatsApp. We would be happy to talk to you more about admissions or what life is like at Concordia right now. We'd be happy to do that. Um, you can see applynow.cw.edu to get to that um, the application. Remember, use code USACUW in, um, in order to apply for free. It's awesome. Once you're on that website too, I encourage you to check out our virtual tour of campus. It's a great way to see what campus is like from your computer, from your home.